Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Eli Mack and welcome back to Pitch This here on the Mr. Eli Mack channel. And what is Pitch This? Well, it's quite simple. Pitch This is the series where I pitch a movie or television show when I get to that point that I would love to see get made. But before I get into the idea, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out here and gets this video out to more people. Also, you can give your thoughts on the video in the comments down below. But also, if you want to be notified whenever a new video like this goes live, please hit the notification bell. It really helps me and it'll definitely help you. So we are almost done with Spider-Man month, but before we can finish it this week, I decided to go against the grain. Yes, I'm not going to be adapting a character from the comics, no, instead I'm going to be taking a character from Japan and bringing him to the United States. And if you're wondering, no, the movie will not be set in the United States. No, no, no. I am just adapting a character story to an American audience. So I'm ready to talk about Spider-Man Japan. And when doing research on Spider-Man Japan, I found this iteration of the character very interesting. He was nothing like the comic book character at all. If you've never, if you don't know about the Spider-Man Japan character, he is nothing like Peter Parker. He is not a photographer. He is not a scientist. No. Instead, the story of Takuya Yamashiro is very fascinating to me. And I hope that I can do justice to this version of Spider-Man. Again, this entire story will be inspired by the Tokusatsu series that... Toye, I believe it was Toye, created for their television. In fact, it's so funny that this show actually inspired the Super Sentai shows, which would later be adapted into the Power Rangers show. So it's very funny, all the connections there that the Japan Spider-Man series created. So, buckle up everybody, because it's time for the movie pitch for Spider-Man Japan. And so we're going to start with our main character, Takuya Yamashiro, doing a motocross race. And Takuya is not exactly what you remember from at least Peter Parker. He is not a scientist, no. In fact, his father, Hiroshi Yamashiro, is a scientist himself. He is an astrophysicist. And also, unlike Peter Parker, he act Takuya actually has a very stable relationship with his girlfriend, Hitomi Sakuma, who is a photo journalist, or at least a freelance photographer, that is. So there's your little Peter Parker stuff with his girlfriend, Hitomi Sakuma. And so as we continue on with the story, a robot would land on Earth, and not many people would know what it is, but Hiroshi Yamashiro would get the assistance of his daughter and Takuya's sister, Shinko Yamashiro, and they would go on a search for the robot. However, they aren't the only ones that are searching for this robot. No, an alien army known as the Iron Cross Army are also searching for this robot. And their leader, Professor Monster, wishes to find this robot and use it to help take over the universe. And as the alien army gets closer and as the robot has landed on the planet, the telepathic messages to Takuya start getting stronger and they start getting more prevalent into the mind of Takuya. And so Takuya's father, Hiroshi, tries to convince his son to come look for the robot, but Takuya says he has prior commitments with the motocross race, and he has to go to that race because, again, it was prior commitments. But Hiroshi tries to tell him to forget about the race, but Takuya says this race is important. It's the, one of the few ways where he can get the money necessary to take care of his family. And so instead of going with Hiroshi and Shinko and his own girlfriend Hitomi, Takuya instead goes to the motocross race. And so Hiroshi Yamashiro, Shinko Yamashiro, and Hitomi Sakuma, both, all three of them go out to the woods to find this robot. And as they are searching through the woods, Professor Monster sends out his own henchmen to find the robot. And instead of finding the robot first, the henchmen find the three searching for the robot and they start trying to attack them and chase after them, trying to make sure that those three do not get the robot. And during the race, after Takuya has already finished the race and he's won his race, the telepathic message 
gets to him again and he's starting to get a migraine trying to get it out of his head and the message tells him to go save his family and after hearing that one message Takuya quickly gets his bike and he drives off into the woods because he's worried about his family and his loved ones luckily for Hitomi and Shinko they are both able to get away from the monsters but Hiroshi is being chased and he's cornered by these monsters. Takuya is luckily able to make it in time to fight them off, but the monsters unfortunately overwhelm him and get him and push him away from them. However, Takuya does see the monsters kill his father, and Takuya, filled with anger, tries to fight them off again, but he is gravely injured by the monsters, and the monsters continue to run continue to search and as he lay there on the ground injured seeing his dead father near him the voice comes back into his mind and it tells him to continue to a cave and Takuya, Takuya with all the strength he can is able to reach his feet and starts walking to a cave as he hears the monsters chasing after the girls Takuya though too injured to actually reach the girls he is able to reach a cave where he sees a man standing at the foot of it. And he tries to talk to this man, and the old man tries to talk to him, trying to see if Takuya has the strength to take the powers, but Takuya just falls onto the ground as he is dying from his wounds. And the old man transforms into a large alien spider named Garia. And Garia gives Takuya the powers of a spider and turns him into Spider-Man. And as the monsters start getting closer and closer to the girls, Takuya, as Spider-Man, comes in and saves the day. And after Spider-Man is able to save the day, Professor Monster learns from Amazonas, his lead lieutenant, about Spider-Man. And he tells his subordinates to make sure that Spider-Man doesn't find the robot. And so during this time, Takuya would fight off the forces of the Iron Cross army and try to get revenge for his father. And he would discover who they were, like who they were exactly, what the Iron Cross army was from the voice of Garia. And Takuya tries to take care of Shinko and Takuji, his younger brother, after their father's death. And Hitomi would also go on the search to discover who Spider-Man really is. And as the Iron Cross Army continues to attack Japan, an investigator for Interpol's secret intelligence division, Juzo Mamiya, tries to discover how to fight off these aliens. And so the battle that Spider-Man would have against the Iron Cross Army would continue as Professor Monster finally sends two of his top lieutenants to fight off Spider-Man, Bella and Rita. And the two proved to be too strong for Spider-Man until Juzo helps Spider-Man out. And Bella and Rita would run off to regroup. And Takuya would reveal his identity to Juzo as a way to better work as a team. And Takuya suddenly hears Garia in his head and it would lead him to a crater in the woods. And as Takuya gets close to it, Bella and Rita would appear out of nowhere and fight off Spider-Man to try to get the robot and the two would prove again to be too powerful for Spider-Man and they would able to beat him down and Bella and Rita would get closer and closer to the robot but the robot would look up and transport away and as it teleports away Bella and Rita would teleport back to Professor Monster and they would report back about finding the robot and so Professor Monster would decide to send more monsters to Japan larger ones this time to call out and try to get the robot back out. Meanwhile, Spider-Man would eventually find this robot by accident, and the robot would greet Spider-Man with his name, Leopardon. I hope I pronounce all of these names right. I'm guessing I'm probably get pronouncing them wrong, but I'm trying my best here. And so the two would notice the destruction of Japan, and so Leopardon would grow in size to become this large mammoth like um robot sort of like a megazord for lack of a better term again i can't remember what the actual japanese name 
for these robots are. All I know is that in America, we call them Megazords. So if I ever finally find out what their names are, I will maybe, maybe say what they are. But again, as of right now, Leopardin is a Megazord. And so Spider-Man would hop into the head of Leopardin and fight off the monsters. Ultimately, the day is saved. And that is how Spider-Man proves that he is a hero to the people of Japan. And after the day is saved, Professor Monster would go to Japan. And he would have a face-to-face -face meeting with Spider-Man. And Spider-Man would let Professor Monster know that Earth will always be protected by the Emissary of Hell. And so Professor Monster would teleport away and he would later send his main lieutenant, Amazonus, to infiltrate Spider-Man's life. So Amazonus would continue in this series as a human that would be unsuspecting to the people of Earth and of Japan. And so Takuya would continue to live his secret life from his family and loved ones. And Takuya would later say goodbye to Garia as Garia would later die and pass on to the greater plane of existence that Garia believes in. And so Leopardin would also agree to continue with, to work with Spider-Man to fight off against the Iron Cross army. And so the movie would end with Spider-Man standing at the top of the Tokyo Sky Tree, watching over to Japan as the Emissary of Hell, the one and only Spider-Man. And that is my pitch for Spider-Man Japan. I know it's not the most extensive pitch, but based off of everything I know about the show, this is what I could think of for at least the first film of maybe a trilogy. Because I really wanted to set up a trilogy with this film in my mind being the first film of that trilogy. And I've also exclusively like fan cast Japanese actors and actresses with the thought process that this would be an exclusive foreign film. like. It would be made in Japan, it would be, it would have Japanese actors and actresses, it would be spoken in the traditional tongue of Japan, so it would be spoken in Japanese and just later translated to American with an American dub for, um, or an English dub for America and across the country with their respective dubs. But I really wanted this to be genuine to the original Spider-Man Japan because I really think that that would be that's what honestly would be best for J Spider-Man Japan to actually film it in Japan to have Japanese actors and actresses play in these roles and even have the language be Japanese. To me, I think that would be what would be what would be best for Spider-Man Japan. A lot very hard to say that one sentence because I had so much going in my head. But anyway, next week we wrap up Spider-Man month with a pitch that's been developing in my head for months and maybe even years. Actually, no, it's only been months because Spider-Man No Way Home came out in December. So next week, it will be the pitch for how to continue Spider-Man in the MCU, or at least my idea for how Spider-Man could continue in the MCU. So until then, leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Again, it really helps my channel so much. Also, hit the notification bell. That way you can be notified whenever a new video like this goes up live. Until then, I've been Mr. Eli Mack. You've been the audience, and I hope you all have a great rest of the day.